Congress appears to be on the verge of putting a bill approving the Keystone XL pipeline on President Obama's desk. Obama has threatened to veto such a bill. Before all of this develops, though, we're going to take a step back and ask, what is the pipeline proposal and why is it so controversial? Here to help us with that is Josh Goldowitz. Uh, he is a, uh, a geologist and hydrologist at uh, RIT. Thank you so much for joining us, Well, Josh. thanks for having me. So uh, let's get started. For people who don't know what the Keystone uh, XL pipeline mm -hmm. is, the, the, key, the, uh, the Keystone pipeline already exists, right? So mm -hmm. it's the XL part right. that is the new part that is the controversial right. uh, thing mm -hmm. that we're discussing. Can you explain that? Sure. The Keystone pipeline, the entirety goes from uh, middle of Alberta, Canada, down to Montana. Then there's a gap from uh, Montana down to Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And from Nebraska, it already extends down into Texas. So it's just that section from the Canadian border mm -hmm. down to Nebraska. All right, so you have supporters who say, look, this will increase the oil supply, keep gas prices down, chances of spill are minimal. Mm -hmm. There's already a pipeline pumping gas from, the, from that section of Canada. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? And there, there are concerns that, that you have and, and others. Yeah. Well, there, there are really two big problems. One is that when we build pipelines and operate pipelines, there's always a chance for a spill. But the biggest problem is that the tar sands are probably the dirtiest energy source that we have. So I think a lot of people are concerned that we're better off not using so much tar sand because it creates so many environmental problems. And so for people who are, again, for who are watching, tar sands is is that mixture, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what is the bitumen it's called, where mm -hmm. it's a big mix, almost like a clay-like mixture. And how is the oil being extracted from that right now? So for uh, or ordinary or typical oil, you can drill down and, and you know, many thousands right. of feet and hit a layer and pump the Up oil out the of the oil. ground. Right. But this stuff, uh, the bitumen, as you say, is so thick and tarry, it literally will not flow. So they're extracting it in two different ways. One way is you clear away all the forest and you just dig up the tar sand. Uh, and the tar sand is so thick, it won't flow out of the sand. So they have to heat it. So I that see. means So that means in order to get it out, you have to burn a whole bunch of natural gas in order to heat it. So before you've even used the tar sand, mm -hmm. it's got a big carbon footprint. Does it have a bigger carbon footprint than, say, coal, which we do use quite a bit of in this country? Yeah, so coal is known as being kind of a dirty fuel compared to, let's say, natural gas or using oil, but tar sand is, is probably the worst. What wow. about people that say that, that, um, that this project will create jobs, mm -hmm. um, you know, will, will create thousands of jobs, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of jobs mm -hmm. just to, just you know for the initial phase right. and then there'll be some jobs remaining mm -hmm. um, that will be good for the economy what do you say well, to that tr I think that's true there'll definitely be jobs created during the construction process but the uh, the the uh, company itself that is going to be operating the XL the XL pipeline thinks there'll be only 35 full-time jobs once the pipeline is constructed after everything is said after and it's done. all said and done pipelines actually operating only 35 jobs hmm. so that's not really very significant. How does the argument, uh, how does the issue of climate change work into this? So uh, you guys know uh, that when we burn fossil fuels, we create carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide goes into the atmosphere and that creates global warming. Well, uh, tar sands create a large amount of uh, carbon dioxide just when it's being extracted from the ground and then processed into something we can use. And then once that fuel is used, it's burnt, creating more carbon dioxide. So it has a significantly more uh, negative impact on the environment than almost any other uh, fossil fuel we can use. But there's a lot of people who say this is an opportunity for us to reduce our dependency on foreign oil mm -hmm. and that we have this, um, as you can say, this gold mine really sitting uh, right. not too far f you know, to the north of us. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we taking advantage of it? Why don't we try and find a way to harness that power or that, that uh, that yeah. fuel source right. in, a, in a safer way. Yeah, I think that's a good point. You know, it, it's uh, the U.S. right now is producing more oil every day than Saudi Arabia. So we are working our way towards energy independence. Uh, this would help, of course, it's coming from Canada, not from the U.S., but the U.S. oil production is growing and we are uh, using way less foreign fuel as it is. Um, but yeah, there, there's definitely, you know, there's some good and bad to, to mm -hmm. this. Uh, 
we just have to balance it is it worthwhile using this crude oil that that is going to be so environmentally uh, damaging well thank you so much for coming in and bringing your expertise I learned quite a bit about what would be pulled from the ground so uh, again Josh it's from RIT. We love having him on. Not his mm -hmm. first time, hopefully not the last. Thank you so much for having me.